for the last two sessions of our discovery track here at Streaming Media East. I hope you have found it to be a valuable experience. Thank you for all the kind words and the suggestions that, that you've given uh, about how we might make this better in the future. If you have any of those, any ideas, uh, as I've said several times, I'm sitting in the back corner of the room. My name is Eric. I'm the editor of Streaming Media Magazine and StreamingMedia.com. And uh, always interested in hearing what you have to say uh, about what we're doing and, and how we can do it better. And our next speaker is going to pose the question, if it really is a question, to OTT or not to OTT, is that a question? Uh, I think we probably know what the answer is. Uh, but speaking on that subject is Jeremy Dujardin, who is the CTO of Global Media and Entertainment Services at Tata Communications. Jeremy? Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> so yes, as, uh, as Eric said, I'm, I'm part of uh, Tata Communications. Um, and I'm going to actually talk a little bit more specifically on OTT uh, on, uh, as it relates to live events and, and how to provide a broadcast-like experience over the top uh, to, to, to uh, enhance the, uh, the viewer, uh, viewer experience. Um, just a quick, uh, my, my corporate duties on, on giving a high-level overview on Tata, in case uh, some of you don't know. Um, you know. Tata Communications is part of the Tata Group. Tata Group is uh, uh, 100 operating companies. Um, it's an organization that's been around for about 140 years. Uh, it's a multinational conglomerate, uh, annual revenues of over you know, $100 billion. Um, you know, and while it's headquartered in India, the majority of that revenue is actually generated uh, outside of India with household brands that you're familiar with, Jaguar, Land Rover, Tetley T, and the like. Um, Specifically, Tata Communications, we're a technology and, and telecommunications company. Uh, we, our, our core assets are our fiber infrastructure and our data centers. Our, our fiber uh, uh, infrastructure com is, is comprised of the largest submarine uh, cable system in the world. Uh, and um, on top of that, we've built a, 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 an IP network that, that's the fifth largest in the world. Um, we, we have about a quarter of the world's uh, global internet traffic rides on our, our backbone. So now on top of this in infrastructure, uh, we've built a suite of media services that we call our media ecosystem. It comprises of everything from uh, our Video Connect network, which is a real-time global uh, contribution uh, network for uh, live events or primary distribution. Um, you know, we have a global CDN uh, for distributing content, for, for streaming content. Uh, we have global teleports, owned and operated teleports around the world to provide satellite services. Um, you know, and we've, we've recently launched our OTT platform as a service, which comprises everything from back-end infrastructure, media processing, transcoding, asset management, storage, CMS, and we've partnered with our sister company, Tata Consulting Services, to build all the front-end application subscriber management so we can provide a complete white-labeled OTT service. But what I'm really here to talk to you about, uh, I mean, I think everybody understands that the, the world is moving towards OTT and that there is a lot of value in providing direct uh, content to consumers in that in that f fashion, um, but what I'm what I'm here to really focus on is ultra live OTT for specifically for live events, um, and you know before we dive into that, uh, I wouldn't be a, a telecommunications carrier if I didn't have a network map. So here's my network map. Um, you know it's it actually is focused more on the media assets that we've deployed uh, globally. So our, we have our global video connect network. Um, you know, uh, some, some off-net uh, capacity that we've built out to extend to other uh, uh, locations. Um, you know, our teleports that are uh, scattered throughout the world. Um, you know, the major switching centers that we've connected to from a, a video uh, standpoint. Uh, we've integrated our MPLS network and our IP network into our video network uh, to extend the reach even further. Um, and uh, our CDN nodes uh, that are, that are uh, outlined over here and, and where we plan to build them. We have you know, uh, dense super nodes that we've built out around our, around our network uh, that leverage our IP, uh, our, our IP connectivity uh, to distribute content. So now, ultra live, low latency OTT distribution. Um, so, you know, let, let's just think, think a little bit about the challenges. I mean, as you think about OTT and distributing content direct to consumers, there's a number of, of challenges and, and, and a number of things that, that traditional broadcast and MSOs and DTH platforms do really well, which is get a single uh, piece of content or a linear feed to millions and millions of users at the same time. Um, it's something that, that really can't be done uh, efficiently today over, the, over the, the traditional streaming technologies and CDNs that are out there. Um, you know, so that latency becomes an issue, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about you know why that is. Um, there, there's no synchronization across devices. You could have five people sitting in the same room on the same internet connection, all hitting you know watch or go 
at the same time, and they're all going to start watching you know, the video at slightly different times, and it'll probably drift over time. Um, the the, the switch, switching between channels, if you have a, an OTT app or a TV Everywhere app and you've ever tried to switch channels, it's very slow and to, to, to select an, a new source of content. Um, and, and all of that lends itself to a, a bro broken social experience. And you know, just kind of a, a few examples, and to kind of highlight how how important this is. I mean, it's no secret how uh, you know the the, the explosion of real-time communications has been happening over the years. I mean, you have you know platforms like Twitter, which are are, are the kind of the poster child for bringing millions of people around a, a, a specific live event. Um, you know, and 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 that's that's great if you can if you can take advantage of that. That's that's a it's a fantastic way. To uh, to engage with your audience, if you can if you can leverage that, but today in today's streaming technologies, you just can't sync up the 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 live stream with what's actually happening in real time. Uh, you know, the, the typically the the latency within a you know using normal normal streaming protocols like HLS or Dash via traditional CDNs are going to give you anywhere from 30 seconds to well over a minute of latency. You know, from the time your, the event actually happened, or even you know, when you compare it to your traditional broadcast. Um, you know, another you know kind of an analogous example. You know, a, a good friend of mine. He was a very avid hockey fan. He, he watches the game live. He has a, a, a just a simple text chat group where he interacts with uh, with you know, with his friends. And you know, they're, they're calling out the plays and saying, "Oh, did you see that? Did you say that?" Well, he 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 had to leave the room. His his daughter fell off her Segway and 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 got hurt. So she he paused the TV. He ran over. You know, and that that wasn't the worst thing that happened because she was actually okay. But when he came back and he hit play, all of a sudden he's seeing these texts come in where he has no idea what's going on. He's he's seeing he's being called out plays. You know, before he, you know, and what he's watching has happened, you know, one or two minutes ago. Well, luckily, he was able to hit the live button and jump right back into the action, and he was back in sync with his friends. But in OTT, there is no live button. You can't jump back in, in front just because of the inherent technology, and, and we'll talk about that. <coughs> so, um, ultra live OTT. So, what, what we've done. You know, we've been working with uh, our technology partner at Insight for many, many years on our core contribution video network, and they've developed a technology that enables us to essentially deliver you know, broadcast quality live streams uh, synchronized across many, many devices you know, in a frame accurate fashion, just like broadcast uh, directly to uh, end users. Essentially, you know, kind of breaking the mold of the, the traditional streaming technology and the, the way to get content, the, the way people get content out there today. <clears throat> so what, what Ultra Live OTD does, and we'll talk about the technology in a minute, I mean, it, up, it opens up a whole new, unique set of linear services. I mean, it essentially, on, on a server-side basis, can, can guarantee a, a predictive fixed latency a, a, a to all the, uh, all the end users. You can even group users together so that if people are, are uh, in, in within a Comcast uh, environment or people within a DirecTV environment, or a, or a, a B Sky B environment, you know, you can act, you can adjust on a per user basis the end to end latency for that specific user or group of users, so that they are married to the the over the air broadcast. So, the, the, enabling synchronized, you know, uh, multi screen experiences is, is now actually a reality. You can obviously synchronize you know, across the your your devices, so you can now. Engage, you know, and in, in, uh, social interaction, you know, whether it's through a a, 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 a text chat or a, a voice call or or an integrated uh, chat room, you can actually engage uh, those uh, and, and enhance the the viewer experience with those interactive options. Um, you know, the, the the higher quality. I mean, we'll we'll talk about the the the, uh, the protocol, uh, but essentially, this is using uh, UDP to to transfer content directly to. Uh, the end users, which is much more robust than uh, than TCP is, and and provides an overall better quality of experience, and the uh, the, the the fast channel change. So as we were talking about earlier, you know, switching between channels today in a streaming environment in an, in an OTT application tends to be very slow. This allows you to to quickly switch through channels and give you a more broadcast, you know, cable or DTH type experience. So the, the solution, essentially, we've taken this technology and we've been working with NetInsight for well over a year and we've deployed it inside our network. 
and we provide all the, the back end uh, infrastructure to support uh, acquiring the content, doing the transcoding, and then supporting the technology from a, from a packaging and, and uh, streaming uh, perspective. And the, the important thing to, to realize and why this is so different is there's no caching involved in, in, this, uh, in this platform. It essentially leaves the, the stream intact and, and, and doesn't um, you know, create the, the typical uh, HLS or Dash files. And we'll talk about that in, in, the, in a bit. Um, again, the, 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 the content itself is, is generated through standard transcoders, the same you know, HEVC or H.264 transcoders that are used uh, today uh, are, are used in this, in this environment. Uh, just instead of packaging them into the, the typical streaming technologies, you're, you're, you're running them through this technology to add the additional error correction. And, it, and you know, we, we help deploy the, the platform you know, with a simple uh, SDK that can be embedded in uh, any, any standard uh, application. Um, you know, we've had customers integrate this within two hours in their app. It's just a simple player SDK that, get, that can get plugged right in. Um, and you know we've been. This is deployed. I mean, this is a, a real life uh, environment, and we've been working with select customers. Uh, one of the customers that we've been uh, you know public about is our, our, our efforts with uh, Formula One. Um, you know, we've been doing a, a few races. We're doing another one this weekend, where we're backhauling all 22 in-car cameras. We're running them through. You know, we're transcoding all of them in our data center. We're running them through this technology, and then we're publishing that out over our CDN. And we're syn we've synchronized. We've done a, a few tests. Uh, one is to synchronize all the, the in-car cameras with uh, one of the over-the-air, uh, one of the uh, uh, DTH platforms in the UK, um, where you can actually see the, the world feed, see the produce feed, and then flip to your favorite in-car camera to, to, to watch you know, the, the action side by side. So it's a truly you know, uh, interactive, multi-screen um, you know, experience that you get. And now uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the architecture and the technology and how it compares to, um, to traditional streaming technology. So, so why is there such a delay in, in, in streaming today? Um, well, the, the fact is you're taking a, 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 the output of a, of a, of a transcoder, uh, a, a, a multi-bit rate stream, and you're essentially taking that stream and you're creating files. So just the simple fact, the act of creating that file is going to take time. I mean, you're, if, you're, if you're using 10-second chunks or 10-second files, then you're going to take, it's going to take you 10 seconds on a minimum to create that file. And then you're caching that in your origin server, and then you're caching that in your CDN, and then you're caching it through all those multiple tiers until it gets to the end user who is also buffering it at their, at their device. <clears throat> So all of this adds you know, a tremendous amount of latency and delay and, and unpredictability in terms of synchronizing it with other, other, other people that are watching that same feed. So with this you know, ultra live OTT solution, um, you essentially keep the stream intact. You keep it as a stream all the way to the end client device. Um, you know, there's no uh, caching. You're using error correction to support any, any loss, lossness on the network itself. And you're simply apply, applying a small fixed buffer at the client side in the, in the player to allow for time for retransmitting packets. And by, by doing that, you compress what could be a minute long of delay down to you know, four or five, six seconds. We talked a little bit about the robustness of, of, uh, of the, the protocol. Um, and just to, just to you know, give a little comparison of UDP versus TCP, I mean, there's been uh, a, a, a tremendous, um, you know, uh, acceptance of UDP for file transfers, you know, for many, many years um, versus TCP because you can you know, fully utilize the link, and this technology is is basically leveraging that for these live streams. So essentially, you take you, you're 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 able to take the full utilization of the of the the capacity that's available, and despite packet loss, you simply retransmit the packets that are lost. If there's enough packet loss or congestion, you, you dial back the, the, uh, the bit rate, just like you would in any other uh, you know, streaming technology. But the difference is you can maintain a higher quality for a longer period of time using UDP versus TCP, which as packet loss occurs, the, 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 the transmission protocol within TCP instantly drops down and then slowly creeps back up. So you have a longer period of time of lower quality video when you're using uh, a, a TCP, which is inherently what HLS, Dash, and all the other standard uh, streaming protocols are using. 
Um, so this is kind of a, a, a another graph that kind of shows you know the the quality that you would that you would get with uh, the UDP in red, where you're going to maintain a higher quality level for a longer period of time than via using TCP, which is the the blue line, and 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 showing how for any bit of packet loss you're kind of dropping down. Um, so the, the the architecture and the platform is is extremely scalable. You know, it's the, the, it's designed in in you know with multiple um, you know aspects, multiple uh, components that can be distributed globally across the network. So the the I'll kind of switch to a uh, an architecture overview to kind of give a, a better uh, 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 a better visualization. Um, but essentially, you know, the way we've deployed it is we've connected you know, a few ingest locations to our Video Connect network. So we can take content in, whether that's over satellite or over our uh, video network. We, we bring it into our data center, we transcode it, again, using the same typical adaptive bitrate transcoders that are, that are used today. We then send that uh, as, a, as a, a transport stream into the ingress server, which adds in the en encryption, DRM if it's required, uh, error correction and then multi-points it out using a series of, of uh, fan-out servers, which essentially multi-points that to uh, uh, the, what we call egress servers across our IP backbone. And, then, and those, those egress servers are designed to essentially host that stream from the clients that are coming in and requesting that, that content. And the, <clears throat> the clients essentially come in to the, the core system, get directed to where, where the stream, which egress server is going to be delivering that stream to the, to the end client, uh, and delivers, uh, and then the stream gets delivered intact. If there's a failure, the, the client gets shifted to another egress server. And, it, and, and, and you know, the, the scalability is, is, is fairly infinite. Um, it's just because it, it, as, as, as long as we continuously add uh, egress servers to, to handle the capacity, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, um, that we can continue to grow. Uh, so <clears throat> that, that's kind of the, that's the, the, the gist of the presentation. I'd like to open it up to any questions if, uh, if anyone has any on, uh, on the technology or, or how, we're, how we're, it, we're using it or how we're, we've implemented it. I'll yes. Microphone around as okay. usual. Hi, who do you use as your CDN, and then also how do you determine who you're going to use for your CDN? So, you know, as, as Tata Communications, we, 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 are, we have our own traditional CDN. Um, you know, and what, what we're illustrating here is what I would consider an alternative to a, to a CDN. So this is the, essentially the, the CDN, and I'm, I'm trying to go through the, the, uh, the kind of outlining the technology behind you know, what we're uh, launching as a, as a kind of a next generation uh, distribution model, an alternative to CDN specifically for live events, um, you know, so that when you're watching a, a video feed, um, you know, if you looked at, if you use the standard CDN and standard uh, streaming technology, including, you know, what the, the CDN that we own and operate, um, you're, you're not going to have synchronization across viewers. So you could have, you know, a thousand viewers, you never know at what point in the, the stream they're actually watching it. And for VOD content, that's fine. That's great, right? But for live events where you want everybody watching the same thing at the same time, um, you, you, you need to, to deploy a technology such as this to make sure that all your users are actually watching the, the video at the, at, the, at the same time. So, that, so this would be our, our, you know, our, uh, an implementation on our infrastructure that a content owner could utilize as an alternative to a CDN. Yes? Yeah, how do you um, deal with the first and last mile domestically where you don't own network when it's not an on-network solution? Yep, so this, this, is, this is really more on the distribution side for, for end users. So this is after the signal has been you know, acquired from the, from, the, from the event, you know, from the venue. So in the case of Formula One, yeah, I mean, Tata Communications had infrastructure at the race site, but it didn't have to be Tata Communications. We could have pulled it in from something like the BT Tower or downlink the signal. We're doing the transcoding and the processing in, in our data centers. So the, the, the first mile is not, not as much of a problem. We're getting the content through a myriad of, of traditional ways. And then we're pushing that out via our IP network. And our IP network is one of the largest in the world, fifth largest in the world. So we're leveraging that infrastructure and all the peering relationships that we have to distribute content via last mile ISPs. So if you look at the, the, uh, the cloud on the bottom, you have those egress servers sit globally around our, uh, our, our IP network. 
and then we're leveraging the, the peering that we have with all the various ISPs that a particular individual customer may have, right? So that a customer might be on Time Warner, they might be on Comcast, they're pulling that in over the internet, just like they would pull in a feed that's being served up by Akamai or, or our own um, you know, traditional CDN. We have time for one more question. Yeah. Could you talk about the player again and how it does the correcting? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, it's a good question. So the, 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 there's, an S, there's a player SDK, so the player itself gets embedded within the application. And when there's, there's a fixed buffer within the player, so the, the, you know, and you can, you can set that, and that's one of the ways you can harmonize the, 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 uh, each of the end devices to be identically in sync or in sync with a live broadcast over traditional television. And that fixed buffer you know, gives you enough time where if there's any packet loss detected, that client, that player, is actually requesting that packet again. So there's a very, very minimal overhead, and any time there's a packet that's lost, you're basically saying, send me that packet again, send me that packet again, so that, and the buffer, you know, the, the, you know, the buffer gives that player enough time to make sure it has all the packets to then decode this, the, the stream and display it on the, uh, on the device. Okay. 